It's about 6.40 in the morning, April 6th. And as you can see, we have some snow on the ground. According to my weather station, it's about 20 degrees and it got down to about 15 last night. And, you know, it was warm a few weeks ago and now it's cold, but we already started our seedlings in our greenhouse. So we started some salad greens and some leafy vegetable uh, seedlings. And those should be fine in a frost, but not 20 degrees. But also, we planted some tomatoes and peppers, which are much more sensitive to the cold. And if they get a freeze at all or a frost, it's over. So I'm going to walk you through our greenhouse and I'll show you how we keep our greenhouse warm when it gets cold. <clears throat> and also how we keep it cool when it gets too warm. So immediately, you can see everything's nice and warm. These are our salad greens and our leafy brassicas. We have some other plants up here. And we have seedlings <clears throat> that are, these are our tomatoes and peppers. You can just see some green seedlings popping up. But mostly what you see is the condensation on the un underside of this lid. And that's because we have this on a heating mat, which normally we have it on a timed switch that it turns on at night and off during the day. But because we had this cold snap for the last um, about four days, um, we decided to just leave it on all the time. And to the touch, it doesn't feel warm. It doesn't feel like it's even on. But <clears throat> it, as far as I can tell, it's on. Um, and I think the condensation on the underside of these seedlings is a good indication of that. So it doesn't do a whole lot. It only takes, I think, um, less than an amp. And I think, I don't know how many watts. It can't be many. But it does a good enough job to keep these things warm. Another thing that I have is a little space heater. And this is on a switch. This white switch that's plugged into my um, my power strip which actually this is these are the four um, plugs that are on the timer and these four are just on all the time <clears throat> and I can't remember how much this was I bought it on online for I don't know it's maybe 20 bucks really useful um, so normally we have the heating mat on the timed side right here so it'll turn on at night and off in the morning just to give those tomatoes and pepper seedlings a little bit of help germinating and staying warm overnight because even when it's not during a cold snap it can get pretty pretty chilly at night but we have everything plugged in all the time now for this cold snap here's the heating mat um, plugged in and this little uh, plug that I have here is actually a switch and this is what I have the space heater plugged into and as you can see here um, this is just a little thermostat and um, uh, humidity gauge uh, that we bought and it just stands alone it's on a battery but as you can see it says it's 34 degrees so this switch turns on at 35 degrees and turns off again when it reaches 45 degrees and that's perfect for this little space heater, which is about, I think it's 12 and a half amps and maybe 400 watts, 300 watts. What is it? 12 and a half amp. Oh, okay. A lot more than that. 1500 watts. But um, with 12 and a half amps and this at less than an amp, it's enough for one circuit breaker and it's not a big deal. Um, and we just run the power out through from an extension cord. These are our composters, which we also feel like it helps out um, at night because they'll absorb the sun's uh, energy and they'll heat up during the day. And at night they'll slowly give off that heat and cool down. Uh, we take these out during the summer 
but in the winter we feel like that helps out a little bit better um, so that's how we keep things warm when it's cold um, but when it's warm and we want to cool things off we have another system for that oh and apparently it's 45 degrees because the space heater just turned off so it does it's really efficient it's not on very long or very often it does its job and it turns right off um, on the other side of the sheet and on the on the outside of the greenhouse I have just a small solar panel and that puts out about five watts of power uh, when the sun's shining on it which is when you want this system to be on and I have that plugged in to this little gadget which is actually um, a thermoregulated switch for an attic ventilation fan and I just bought that online for a couple bucks it was really cheap and so this one turns on at 100 degrees and off at 85 degrees once it's cooled down a little bit and I put that purposefully at the very top of the greenhouse so it would be at the you know the warmest spot in the greenhouse so that by the time this gets to 100 degrees it's maybe less than 90 um, where the plants are so I have that plugged into this which is a little computer fan that itself is only four watts so it's fully powered by that little solar panel the whole system that I rigged up here um, I came up with that with the idea one day and because I had this thing just lying around and um, it really was inexpensive for the whole thing uh, and on the other side of this panel uh, on the other side of the fan I have what is just um, a clothes dryer vent um, uh, cover for the outside it's got little flaps on the other side so when the fans on the flaps open and when the fans off obviously the flaps are closed so it does a really good job of of um, letting the fan do its job and and cool I have it blowing out so it takes the hot air and blows it out um, and that I've witnessed that in action too and it really does the job very quickly um, it goes from a hundred degrees where the switch is turned on to 85 and um, in a couple minutes um, at least during the spring during the summer we wouldn't have anything in the greenhouse anyways for the most part uh, because these will all be in the ground outside growing where they're supposed to be and there's really no reason to have anything in the greenhouse during the summer at least as far as we're concerned for our purposes um, and of course we'll just disconnect this during the summer when it's not in use but for now in spring and I also can assume in fall that this system uh, does pretty well um, keeping things warm when you need them warm and keeping them cool when you need them cool I'll give you a quick word about why I think starting your plants in a greenhouse is the best way to go if you're a serious gardener and you can swing the cost of a greenhouse for building your own or for purchasing one like we have uh, it's only six by eight by seven feet high um, but we feel as you know people who really spend a lot of time gardening in the summer that this is a worthwhile investment because uh, if you're starting your seeds indoors you can you know have your temperature regulated the way you want it and you can have your day length regulated with your lighting system but there's really nothing like uh, acclimating your plants and starting them as seedlings in, a, in an environment where they're getting the natural sunlight the natural day length that's progressively longer through the spring so you're getting the natural uh, increase of of daylight hours as the season goes so by the time you're ready to transplant outdoor uh, outdoors in your garden they're already acclimated to the to that day length dynamic and also as far as temperature goes inside usually people keep their houses um, pretty constant as far as temperature goes 
Uh, but out here you can get really warm days and cool nights and we feel like that uh, is, is it does a better job of getting the plants ready for being outdoors. Um, and so they're not as shocked as they would be otherwise if you, ha if you have them starting off in a very stable environment.